Bart really threw me off guard when he said that uh, the person before me was the second last speaker because I was expecting another lightning talk and I was sort of not prepared to be the last speaker, <laughs> really. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, community as a pawn. And the reason I'm going to do this is not because uh, I work on the community side of things and not because I want to flex my really bad Duolingo friend skills, which I've just been practicing for two weeks. It's of no use. Uh, but the thing with me is when I say that I'm a principal technology advocate at SUSA, a lot of people come up to me and ask me, um, but do you not really work on the cloud native side of things? Uh, SUSA is actually known for Linux, right? Um, and anybody here in the audience who's actually worked on um, SUSA Linux Enterprise or even any of the open source uh, SUSA distributions, can anybody show? Uh, oh, that's quite a number. Uh, and hi, Rob. I see you there. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and this is a conversation that comes up ever so often um, when I have to explain my job, like the real good gentleman who uh, spoke about explaining Kubernetes to his grandma. I have to do that ever so often at family functions, and a lot of them are in the IT side of things. So they're like, yeah, SUSE is Linux. SUSE is known a lot for SAP and Linux, but not like cloud native. So I'm gonna take you through the TLDR history of SUSE so far. And essentially, it started off right when I was two years old. Um, I actually, <laughs> uh, on my second birthday, SUSA was founded. Uh, and it, the acronym for SUSA is software, and I'm not going to say that because essentially I'm going to butcher that language as well. Let's just stick to butchering French for now. So uh, SUSA was founded in, uh, sec on 2nd September 1992. After a lot of mergers, acquisitions, um, we ended up acquiring Rancho and a bunch of other stuff along the way, and also New Vector, which is our container security and management tool. And uh, if you look at the thing that has been consistent with respect to SUSA so far, uh, is its um, focus on open source, on being truly open source, on being, uh, you know, respective or uh, on being respectful of the community and the collaboration that brings uh, that the community brings with it so uh, when i say that we have these as our unofficial ideals um, please uh, you know take me really really seriously because honestly speaking i think this is what we live by every day at our company and uh, when we talk about open source and when we talk about uh, the business of open source, right, uh, a lot of people look at the technology, but uh, a lot of the people don't look at the actual people behind the technology. And I think that's important because, uh, you know, people create tech. We haven't yet started creating tech that creates people. And I hope we don't come to that stage. So... <laughs> Um, when we talk about those people, that community, it's what we help foster uh, with our open source communities on the Linux side as well as the container side of things. Um, now, a lot of you might be familiar with um, the projects on the CNCF landscape like K3S, um, Longhorn, and Cube Warden. I know that some of you might, might at least have heard of it. But did you actually know that we also have an equally active contributor community on the Linux side as well? And uh, honestly speaking, uh, we are here because we not only look to these communities, but we also actively build out these communities with the help of collaborative efforts. A huge, huge shout out to Celium folks. Um, I know there were a couple yesterday, and there was a talk about eBPF today. But uh, honestly speaking, our collaborative efforts with them over uh, the course of time has helped us reap the uh, benefits of um, harnessing the power of EBF, uh, EBPF, sorry, oh my God, how can I get that wrong? <laughs> but uh, harnessing the power of EBPF to secure your uh, cloud native workloads. And uh, whether that be on your local workstation like Rancher Desktop, or whether it be on your container management platform that we offer, uh, that is Rancher or your K3S distribution or our RKD2 distribution, we have it, um, you know, across these distributions because of these collaborative efforts that we've engaged with, with another community. And similarly, we, we've just recently announced this, um, the integration with another open source project that is SPIN. 
And this is just the start of things to come because WebAssembly is another whole new ecosystem that we are integrating with and we're just stepping into. So um, given the industry trend and given the direction in which the industry is headed, um, this is collectively broadening our technical horizon and it's not just for Rancho or for SUSA alone. And uh, when I talk about broadening horizons, it's absolutely essential that uh, I uh, also talk about our advocacy efforts with respect to the community. Uh, the reason uh, community advocacy is a little difficult is because it's a little difficult to measure um, and quantify when in a real world context. And uh, I, I, I mean, we always have these conversations unofficially, but um, bringing value is different when it is in the community side of things, as a lot of y'all would know. And uh, our, if our efforts are always to give the people um, that are our audience, irrespective of whether you're an enthusiast or whether you're an experienced person, the actual value that you came for, that is learning about new stuff. And that could, not ne that could mean non-technical stuff as well. For example, uh, when I think last week, uh, before coming over to KubeCon, we had a session uh, around the legalities of open source, which is something uh, I personally did not know a lot about myself. So I am going to wrap this up right now because I know that I'm probably a little over time. But uh, the whole motto around open source, around cloud native is this. Um, we could sort of get the best minds in the business in any company. A lot of us have budgets. And we could hire the best minds and we could probably do it all by, by, all by ourselves. But open source has taught us that if you actually go together, you achieve so much more. And you can pioneer innovation in ways that was previously not possible. And that is the end of my short keynote. And I hope it made a little sense to you, uh, because that was also a sneak peek into how my mind works. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to be there at KubeCon. So uh, this is a QR code. If you, if you want to find us, we'll also be very, very prominent at, a Cube, at the KubeCon Boot G5. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And I hope you had a fantastic event. Um, and I'm looking forward to all the conversations that we'll have after this. So thank you, everyone. And have a very good evening. But, 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 just a minute. Right away. I'm not going to give it to you right now. <laughs> Uh, I want to actually in, uh, invite the organizing team on here, if that's OK. I know this is impromptu. Uh, but can we have the organizing team on here? Because they deserve a huge, huge round of applause. And they're the un uh, unsung heroes of this conference. So can we have them here, please? No, this is purposely to put you all on the spot, really. <laughs> so, a, yeah. so a lot of this wouldn't have been possible without these and the volunteers and the program committee and a lot of the people. That's, that's, this is just, the I think, the tip of the iceberg, as they say. And there's a lot of community effort involved. And I'm really thankful that uh, you know y'all put up such a fantastic conference, primarily because I'm also a first time attending, and this is my first time attending Cloud Native Rejects. And it's been an awesome experience so far. I've been telling Benazir that all through the day, she'll probably kill me if I tell her anymore. <laughs> so thank you so much, and a huge round of applause for all of them, by the way.